I got several questions about neuromodulation after our video on small fiber neuropathy. So tonight, this review is for those of you who reached out and wanted a more in-depth overview. So what's all the buzz about? Let's talk neuromodulation. Okay, so what is it? What is neuromodulation? We're going to approach this question and this treatment option from this perspective. All bodily functions occur because of the flow of electrical impulses, right? So the body generates its own electricity, which is kind of actually amazing if you really think about it. So when these impulses are affected due to either injury or illness, can we help it? Can our technological advances be used to assist this when the system goes haywire? Pun intended. And for clarity, let's discuss what the term modulation actually means. It's the process of converting data into electrical signals, which are optimized for transmission. That's it. So in simpler terms, all this means is that we're changing or altering or controlling the influence on something to make it easier for the body to use. For example, endorphins in the body are responsible for the modulation of pain sensation. The more endorphins that are released, the lower our pain tends to be. So to take this a step further, if we had a way of stimulating the brain to release a greater number of endorphins, then we'd be modulating them. So neuromodulation is a technology that acts directly upon the nerves. It is an alteration or modulation of nerve activity by delivering electrical or pharmaceutical, meaning drug, agents directly to a targeted area. Also, I want to clarify that this video is all about the invasive procedure as far as neuromodulation goes, meaning these all require either an inpatient or outpatient procedure and appointment with your neurosurgeon. I'll be reviewing TENS or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, which is the non-invasive method of nerve stimulation in a different video. So you can check that out as well. So let's talk about a tiny bit of history on neuromodulation. Now, the modern era of neuromodulation began actually in the early 1960s with the use of deep brain stimulation or DBS to treat chronic pain that was not responding to mainstream treatments and then moved to include spinal cord stimulation by the end of the decade. These early efforts were not without complications though due to mechanical shortcomings of the new devices. By 1974, less invasive methods of placing electrodes became available. Implanting electrodes outside of the typical spinal cord space where they were normally placed enabled stimulation to occur without the side effects that normally plague this technology, like for example, spinal cord compression and leakage of the cerebrospinal fluid or the fluid that bathes the brain and spinal cord. So what does neuromodulation treat? So these devices and treatments are life-changing, truly life-changing. They affect every area of the body and treat nearly every disease or symptom from headaches to tremors to spinal cord damage to urinary incontinence. Most frequently, People think of neuromodulation in the context of chronic pain relief, and within that group, it is currently used for complex regional pain syndrome as well as peripheral neuropathy. So lastly, neuromodulation devices can stimulate a response where there was previously none, like in the case of a cochlear implant, restoring hearing in a deaf patient. And for every existing neuromodulatory treatment, there are many, many more on the horizon. An emerging technology called BrainGate Neural Interface System has been used to analyze brain signals and translate those signals into cursor movements, allowing a severely impaired 
uh, individual to have a pathway to controlling a computer with thought, which offers potential for one day restoring some degree of limb movement as well. So you can see that this has vast implications for treating chronic illness and nerve issues where we weren't able to Next, before. We're going to get into the actual procedure and a few of the devices and how they work. So neuromodulation is a reversible treatment that is generally performed only if a patient has exhausted all non-surgical pain relief methods, medications, underlying cause management, etc. And patients often work with primary care physicians, neurologists, and pain management physicians to explore these options. Neurosurgeons will implant a device and use it to alter the activity of certain pathways in the nervous system. And these devices act in one of two ways. They may either deliver small doses of medication or a weak electrical current. So electrical current based neuromodulation, also known as neurostimulation. This is a technique that uses an electrical current rather than medication. They confuse the pain signals along the nerve by replacing them with a the tingling sensation. So neurostimulation is generally offered on a trial basis first, and then patients who experience relief may have a permanent system implanted. Neurostimulations are mostly done outpatient and they do not require any large surgical incisions, which is great. And patients usually need only a local anesthetic, which is also a win-win. To expand on this, there are four types of neurostimulation for various neuropathic issues, which your neurosurgeon will discuss with you once this option is identified as necessary. These include spinal cord stimulation, and during this procedure, a small electrode is placed in the epidural space next to the spinal cord. It may be used to address abdominal or pelvic pain. Sacral nerve stimulation is where electrodes are placed along the sacral nerves at their opening where they exit. And this procedure can be used to treat many, many different types of chronic pelvic pain, such as proctalgia, which is rectal pain, vulvodynia, which is vaginal pain, and interstitial cystitis, which refers to bladder and pelvic pain and the urge to urinate very frequently. Very, very painful and chronic problematic issues, all three of them are. So the fact that this is available to treat that is it's a miracle. The next is intraspinal nerve root stimulation, and this is where electrodes are placed along the nerve rootlets. And a rootlet is referring to a single thread of nerve instead of an entire nerve in the spinal canal. It sounds so cute, doesn't it? Rootlet. So it's used to treat some of the more pinpointed abdominopelvic pain syndromes. So abdomino meaning abdomen, pelvic is the the pelvis area that houses your uh, lower belly, your intestines, uh, bladder, for women, their uh, uterus and ovaries. Gen that's, that's the general area we're talking about here. Peripheral nerve stimulation is next. And this is where an electrode is surgically placed next to a peripheral nerve. A weak electrical current then inhibits the transmission of painful impulses along that nerve relieving the pain within that area. And for patients whose pain is not adequately managed by neurostimulation or other treatment options, and who are maybe taking large daily doses of narcotics, medication-based neuromodulation is next. And this is the second method of neuromodulation. And this is basically a medication pump, which may offer a better alternative. So these infusion pumps are called intrathecal pumps. The term theca or thecal refers to a space created by the specific membrane that surrounds the spinal cord. This is called the dural membrane. An example of this is the intrathecal baclofen pump, which enables the constant administration of minuscule amounts of potent medication to the spinal cord and nerve roots to help alleviate spasticity. The system consists of a programmable pump 
that contains a reservoir of medication and a spinal catheter to deliver it to the spinal canal. This treatment is often introduced on a trial basis as well first. The patient goes home with an external battery pack that provides neurostimulation for several days. And if this trial treatment reduces pain sufficiently, then the patient may choose to receive a permanent system. In which case, during a follow-up procedure, a pacemaker-like impulse generator is implanted beneath the skin. Though effective, they also require periodic refills of medication and vigilance to make sure the medication does not run out because if it does or the system malfunctions in some way, then the patient can go into drug withdrawal, which we absolutely want to avoid. So despite their technological complexity, several studies indicate that for some patients, early use of neuromodulation technologies may be more cost effective at controlling certain conditions overall than routine approaches, particularly when accounting for all of the multiple medications and treatments that are normally needed. If you have any questions or currently use neuromodulation and would like to add your input or cautionary tale, then drop a comment below. Peripheral neuropathy and small fiber neuropathy and many other chronic illnesses can respond to this therapy, but the most important step is to identify these symptoms and conditions, which I shed light on here.